Hello and welcome. Okay, so how to get good at the guitar? Well, aside from all the things that I should be covering here, uh, I think probably here, uh, you need to practice. You need time. You need 30 minutes a day, minimum. Five minutes a day, it's not enough. 15 minutes a day, well, it's better than five. 30 minutes a day, find it. By token of the fact that you're even watching this YouTube video attests to the fact that you can find 30 minutes a day. Do it, do it. Okay, on to point number one. Okay, picking. So before we go any further, I'd like to say that I'm not going to be going into a huge amount of detail on every point because there's quite a lot to cover and I do want this video to be short enough to fit into the lifespan of a human. So, that said, if there are things that you want me to go into more detail on, which I do intend on doing at some point, drop me a comment in the comment section, like and subscribe. So, cracking on! The secret of picking, well, you have to be able to just pick, and that means just pick one string. If you can't pick one string consistently, then you won't be able to pick when you start using your fretting hand, as well as all the skipping strings that's involved in it. So what you need to do, get yourself a metronome. You can get a free app on the App Store or Play Store or whatever tablet you have or phone you have. Or you could even go old school, buy a metronome. Mm -hmm. Stick it on, get it on the tempo, set it to one side, get a timer, see if you can pick for one minute consistently, see how your hand feels at the end of it, your wrist. Just put the metronome on and just start picking. <laughs> and so on and so forth. Do it for a minute, rest. Do it for another minute, rest. And just keep practicing that. The better you get at picking, just picking, the better you will be at picking. Now, again, it's important you understand that that's not the only thing that you should be doing. You should be doing the exercises as well. In, you know, all the, all that stuff in other ones, other more complicated ones. But add this into your practice and it will make a huge amount of difference. And just to add, it's very important that when you pick, the movement we're looking for comes from the wrist and not from the elbow. So it's quite easy to fall into a trap of picking fast where you just kind of use in the elbow. But it will lead to troubles further down the road. It is worth investing the time, make sure that you are using your wrist properly. And also practice on all the strings as well. Don't just don't just do one. Make sure that you practice on every string. Finger picking, okay, finger picking. So this is where you are picking the strings with your fingers rather than with a pick. Okay, so you want your thumb slightly to the side of your fingers rather than on top, okay? You want your fingers kind of curled like this. And what you're gonna be doing with your fingers is, isn't, isn't this, you're not reaching for the strings like this, you're gonna kind of use this, this part of the finger, on all the fingers obviously, to just kind of like gently pick at the strings like a really bad T-Rex. Okay, uh, never mind. Um, <laughs> whatever. Okay. Yeah, and then after that, just start with simple things like this. Just start doing that, getting the fingers to move. Just start those top three strings, third string, second string, first string, G string, B string, E string, whatever you'd like to call them. Um, and just one at a time, thumb picking on the low E string. You should get used to doing that. It's 
strumming. So this is a joint effort between the wrist, the elbow, and a little bit of the shoulder, but not much of the shoulder. You don't tend to be doing that with the guitar, unless you're Pete Townsend. Okay, anyway, enough of that. Yes, a joint effort between these, mainly these two parts here, the, um, the wrist and the elbow. What you're looking to do is the elbow kind of just moves a little bit, the wrist flicks up and down like that. So it's not just the wrist, otherwise you do that. And it isn't just the elbow, otherwise you do that. So, joint effort. Again, you're looking to have the pick kind of straight to the strings and going through it. You don't want to hold it too tight. You don't want to hold it too soft. If you hold it too softly, you'll drop it. If you hold it too tight, you'll just... It just doesn't sound very nice. If you're not using a pick when you strum, you're just using your fingers, these are the two fingers that you, uh, that you really want to be making contact with the strings with on the way down. Got these two fingers, by the way, this is a, a useful tip, these two fingers are a really, really good pair. Possibly the best pairing of fingers that we have. They're, they're kind of of similar length, and they're next to each other, and they have quite good movement. But we'll, we can, I'll do more things about that in the future, but. It's a good pairing. It's a good pairing for future reference. Okay, so strumming without a pick, you go down and you hit the string with the fingers, these two fingers. So these two fingers, these other two fingers, your first finger and little finger, index finger and pinky, are gonna kind of be to the side and you're just naturally going to make contact with those strings, with the strings with those two fingers, and then up with the thumb. So you get this kind of movement. So it's almost like you're almost doing that, but you're not doing that. That's kind of like, if you were to boil it down to one hand position, that would probably be it. <laughs> and then it's, you kind of, you go down. You don't want to twist your hand before you go down. You just want that to allow your hand to rotate as you bring, as you strum down. And then you want to just allow your hand to rotate up as you bring your thumb up. So it's down, up, down, up, down, up, and that can then, Good. And now for the fingers. So the fingers are a very, very important part of playing the guitar, as indeed they are for nearly every instrument in the world. But we're not talking about that, we're talking about the guitar. So when you play the guitar, what you want to do with your fingers mostly is get them arched. So you want this kind of position here. You don't want this position here. Now, what I'm going to say next completely counters what I just said about your fingers being arched. A really useful movement position for your fingers to be in to play the guitar well is that, is that position there, okay? Now, when you are playing just one string, you don't want your fingers to be like that. You want them to be arched and strong, but there, there are times when you are going to need your fingers to be able to do that kind of movement. And it's a very weird movement if you're not used to it. The way to do it, the way to learn it, is, is to try and just get your fingers to do that. And the, what I mean is to have a bend there in the finger, and then for this bit to be inverted. Now, it's important to understand, this is not a natural movement. I can't actually do that with my fingers without some kind of resistance, without applying pressure in some way. What you have to learn is to be able to transfer the to transfer that resistance from my from your thumb or wherever it is you're doing it on a surface or something and onto the guitar it will come in handy trust me so for example here i use my little finger but you can use your third finger as well in fact the third finger is probably even more popular than the, than the little finger but it's good to do it with both good to be able to do it with both so the third finger using it like this kind of bending it like my first finger is barred across the string. This is an A-shaped bar chord. So it's the shape of an A major chord. I'm just using one finger to play those three strings rather than three fingers, which is a bit awkward here. It was a little A6. Okay, here. Or if you're doing an exercise like this, for example, notice the cheeky movement there. so on. 
How to get better at playing chords? Well, getting to chords quicker tends to be like the most, the most useful thing that you can learn to do. Which means moving all of the fingers to that chord at the same time, not one at a time. So if you're at the stage where you are putting one finger down at a time, the way to improve is to get them all going down together. And the way to do that, unfortunately, takes a bit of time. You have to just not cheat. Don't let one finger go down first. Keep them all up in the air at the same time. Brace them there and then slowly lower them down. Now this may take you like a whole minute just to do one chord. It doesn't matter. Do it once, take the time. Take the time to try and get the fingers in the right place. They're gonna move all over the place. You have to just try and keep them there and eventually when they're there, fantastic things will be going on in your head. Your fingers will be learning how to do it and then you slowly put them down and just get used to doing that. Go between the A and the D and just pick two chords or three chords and just try and slowly get them to do it. And learn to bar. Learn bar chords. Literally, you can know every single major chord and minor chord in the world if you can play an F chord. If you can play an F and you can play an F minor in a bar chord, you can do every major and minor chord in the world. There are 12 major chords and 12 minor chords, but that doesn't matter. You know them all. It's good. Scales. Oh, we love scales. Okay, I'm sh pretty sure that you will hear uh, many, many different things from many, many different people about how to learn and practice and get better at playing scales because there are quite a few of them. So, if I were you, I would learn the minor pentatonic, the major pentatonic, which are shapes one and two of the pentatonics. I would learn the major scale and the minor scale. Just, if you've got those, then of course you can branch into the seven modes of the major scale and the other three shapes of the pentatonics. Um, if you've got all of those, you probably shouldn't be looking at this particular section the video but that's fine you are welcome to once you've got them stick a backing track on there are loads of them on YouTube stick a backing track on of the scale that you're in so for example if you're playing the B minor scale stick a backing track on in the key of B minor and just kind of play over the top of it I don't try and solo just play the scale forwards and backwards not completely linearly not just like Not completely like that. Try and have some fun with it. But if you have a backing track going on in the background, it makes playing the scale a lot more pleasant. You also know, you tend to, it'll give you a better um, indication as to whether you've made a mistake, which is quite useful when you're learning something. If you're doing the G major scale, put a, a backing track in the key of G major or, and go from there. Vibrato, it's where you take a note and you wobble it, like this. There are lots of different kinds of vibrato you get. Imagine uh, four different points of a square on a graph and you can plot any point. And you've got deep, you've got shallow, you've got quick, and you've got slow, and then you can have any point in between that. So you can have a quick and a shallow vibrato, and it might sound like this. You could have a slow, very deep vibrato. It's terrible, I'm saying. Slow it down. Find a vibrato that works. Get, understand that there is more than one that you can use. That's the best way of thinking about it. It's okay to, 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 fight, to have one that you use a lot, but when you're playing a particular genre of music, it's important that all of the techniques that you use should adhere to the genre that you're playing. And just as an extra, 
vibrato is something that, by the way, it comes from the forearm. Not actually from the fingers. Your fingers don't really tend to do that much when it comes to doing vibrato. Your fingers hold the note down and then the forearm actually rotates. It's that kind of movement, just not that much of a movement. And that's where it stems from. Bending is an absolutely epic technique that you should definitely learn to do if you haven't already learned it. So for this, you're going to need your thumb, you just sort of like over the top a little bit, not too far, not too little, just a little bit. Second finger and third finger here. Third finger is the most important because that's going to be the one that's holding, holding the note down in the place that you want to hear it. Second finger just kind of rests behind it. Doesn't matter if it's in the fret behind it, so for these higher frets, you're going to struggle to get you're going to struggle to get two fingers in the same fret. So the second finger can just sit in the fret behind it. It doesn't matter. Okay, here. And then together, you just lever the string up. Simple as that. Your first finger, you tend to want your first finger kind of resting behind the strings, and that'll just mute out any, any extra strings that you may well pick as you, uh, as you release the bend. Sliding is an awkward little technique um, because in order to slide you have to be able to move your fingers and in order to move your fingers you need to release some pressure but you need to release just enough pressure to allow your fingers to move while still hearing the note because if you take your fingers off too much the note stops being a note and starts being a rather than a there you go. So you pick the note, you don't, I say it's difficult, you don't really want to release the pressure. You do, you do, you need to release some pressure, otherwise your finger will not move. But you need to find out, you need to learn and practice how much to ease the pressure off by. Okay, so practice just doing it on one string, going down and what else? Oh yeah, look at where you want to go. So if you want to slide to the 12th fret from fret three, Look at the 12th fret. Don't look at the 3rd fret. Don't look down there. Okay. Sliding. Great. Hammer-ons and pull-offs. They are the brother and sister of techniques. They are, you can't, you're doing one without the other is like walking with your left leg and not your right. Um, you need to do both. They are like, they come as a package. So, hammer-ons and pull-offs. Mm -hmm. Hammer-on, called a hammer-on because you have to hammer that finger down. You have to hammer it on. Okay? So, and you want to do it with all the fingers, especially the little, and no harm in reaching to that fret and possibly even one fret higher if you want to go that far, that's, that's good. Uh, pull-offs. You don't just lift your finger off, that's a common mistake. So for imagine you're just doing a pull off from the third finger to the third finger to the first finger. Imagine that you're gonna pick the string with the third finger, okay? So you're gonna pick the string. If you were picking it here, you'd pick it like that. Now if you're picking it with the third finger, you kind of pull the string down like that. And this is difficult because what you'll find is your first finger wants to go with it which is why it's good to practice it. I tend to find practicing it on the high E string is good because it means that your first finger doesn't actually have anywhere to go. If you pick, if you... So you just lose the note completely. So it's good to practice on that. It's good to practice on all the strings, but you know, practice it on that string to begin with to get your head around it. So yeah, hammer-ons and pull-offs in the bag. Rhythm and timing. So what are we talking about here? A little subject? No. 50% of music is rhythm and timing. Half of music is playing the right notes. So having the right chords, knowing the right scales, playing the right melodies. The other half of it is playing it all at the right time. Because if you don't play it at the right time, then you don't get songs that you know. There are only 12 notes in music, so a lot of it boils down to when you're playing them. And that's all. So do it. Do the metronome thing, get it, listen to music, click to the beat.
tap to it, understand that there is a beat and it is there all the time. Develop your sense of timing. Okay, attitude and perseverance. There will be times when you want to die from playing the guitar. God, I can't even list it. So it happens to everyone, to absolutely everyone. Don't give up. If you just need to take a break, like I just said, playing it. If you just want to have a blast, go for it. Have a blast. Okay? Don't lose faith. Keep going. Persevere. Attitude is possibly one of the most important things that you can have when you learn to play the guitar. Setting yourself a good goal is all part of that. Now you may just want to play a few chords, sing a few songs, and that's kind of all you want to do with the guitar. But if you actually want to get better at the guitar and better at doing that stuff, then you have to have a more ambitious goal than just playing a few chords and singing a few songs. I could probably get somebody to the point where they can play a few songs and sing a few songs with enough practice in a couple of weeks. So if you're playing the guitar for anything more than that, you really should have a slightly more ambitious goal. Now, it might not be to be the best guitarist in the world or the fastest guitarist in the world or the whatever. But if you don't broaden what you do, then you'll never get better at it. You'll never, pro you'll never be able to, pro to progress because there is nothing to progress to. If you're just trying to play a few chords, well, yeah, great. <laughs> Learn a few chords. A couple of weeks down. Okay? It's about learning some scales. It's about learning techniques. Learning hammer-ons and pull-offs and sliding and bending and changing chords successfully and learning to bar chords properly and doing all of these things because you will still be able to play a few songs, play a few chords and sing a few songs. The difference is, is that you'll be better at it and you'll be able to do so much more on the guitar. So when it comes to just playing a few chords, you'll be better at it. It's not just about playing a chord like that, playing a few chords in a sequence. Okay, it's about doing, it's about being able to be more inventive, creative with it. So that might become, um, oh, what was it? Uh, and it just sounds better than just that first thing. And so, Hopefully, this, by the way, is not the definitive list on everything you need to do to get better at the guitar, but I will be looking at lots and lots and lots more things. So please, like and subscribe, like I've already said before. Like and subscribe, stay in touch. Click the little notification bell thing and let's do it.